Good evening, known world. I am Excellency Ramut Al Taiba, coming to you from the Kingdom of Artemisia in the Barony of Bronzehelm. And with me today is the amazing Her Grace, Sir Helga. Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? Uh, not too bad. I had to figure out how to remember to put on makeup tonight since it's been long enough. And, you know, it's the pandemic, so it's like... <sighs> You know, you seem to have pulled it off successfully. Thank you. <laughs> so why don't we have you go ahead and introduce yourself, a little of your SCA history. So uh, I'm Helga. I'm from the West Kingdom. I am a duchess, a knight, and a pelican. Uh, I have been playing in the SCA since I was 15. Uh, we're just going to say cough, cough. That's over 15 years. Oh, my God. I've been playing. And... FYI, Sir Helga and I are going to uh, be working through our fun internet issues as it appears that uh, it, it's giving her a little bit of a, a hiccup, <laughs> which is all right because we'll be able to handle it without a problem. Give her a moment here. Uh, tonight on the show, Helga and I are going to dive into retention and talk a little bit about few things that are kind of near and dear to both her and my heart. Give her another moment here. And I apologize for my appearance. Um, I actually am coming down from an event high yesterday in the kingdom of Artemisia in the Barony of Bronzehelm. We had an elevation of one of my dear friends and I got to play voice herald to uh, uh, for the elevation ceremony and it was very moving and having not been in in-person event for a while kind of peopled out a little bit so I'm just like mm, minimal effort but uh, as far as appearance wise but 120 percent effort when it comes to being here to talk about different topics so it, it hopefully we get this internet figured out here shortly Helger's response was, and I quote, "Fuck you, internet." So, <laughs> give her a minute. It's uh, she's she's fixing it. <laughs> Not a problem. Well, since I've got a moment or two, well, Helga's internet's getting figured out. Um, I would like to give a shout out to the artisans yesterday in the Kingdom of Artemisia. Uh, we held our Queen's Prize, where it allows artisans with a AOA level or no um, AOA level award for arts and sciences to compete with a display, a, not really compete, to display their works, show their progress and have conversations about what they're working on and directions they're going. Um, and there were amazing people who've never shown before, people who've shown before, and it was an incredible experience. Um, if you have an opportunity to check it out, it is on Facebook. Uh, we did a little live walkthrough and a little discussion with some of those artisans on the Barony of Bronzehelm's Facebook page. It was phenomenal. Um, people who'd only been playing six months turned up with some amazing work. Uh, shout out to Milady Catherine up in Stanworm. Your embroidery was amazing. Shout out to um, Milady Inga in Bronzehelm. I cannot believe for six months that you turned out all that amazing work. It, it's phenomenal. Incredible. <laughs> Welcome back. We yelled at the router. We had a discussion. It has decided to submit to my needs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I had faith that you could, uh, once again, subjugate it to, to, you know, adhere to your will. <laughs> okay, so I had to move a bunch of uh, stuff and it was just like... <laughs> My router has since then been like, oh, I'm sorry, you touched me and I'm a delicate creature. And I'm having headwear problems apparently today. So I if mean, you would like to come fix headwear problems for me. So is this going to be one of those shows where it's just all over the place? I think so. Awesome. <laughs> I think the internet, sh uh, shout out for randomness and me fiddling with my veil hat. I think it's the hat doesn't want to sit on the veil. And mm. then putting the cornet on top of that for Baron Hill is like... Pfft. Yeah, no, if you ever watch me wear a veil, it's like just chaos. It's absolute chaos. So here's, so, <laughs> this is my secret. Where, where did I, I drop off? You dropped off just as you were starting your story. Ah, 
Okay, so uh, I'm Helga, I'm a duchess, a knight, uh, and a pelican from the West Kingdom. Uh, I have played since I was 15 years old, and then I had the shocking realization that it is 20 years. Hmm. Uh, so now everybody knows how old I am. Um, and what can I say? I, I've been in a part of like almost like every aspect of the SCA, really. Uh, started as youth, I've uh, been a fighter off and on. Uh, more often on, sadly, due to some injuries. Uh, now, I would definitely say on, but, you know, there's that. Um, and so I, I'm trying to think of, like, what else there is about me. Uh, I have cute dogs and a very sweet horse, uh, and I enjoy hitting my friends with sticks. Yeah. Excellent. Have you I'm also helped? full of opinions, and I cuss a lot. Mm. <laughs> that, that once... You know, there's nothing wrong with a little colorful dialect when it's appropriate. Oh, yes. Yeah. Warning. We will use offensive language. Um, I, I know I try to hold my language as best I can under tight rain, but some days it's just to go goes to hell in a handbasket really quick. <laughs> I mean, I saw the warning label go by the bottom of the screen, so I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this is not a PG show today. <laughs> Oh, it's it's not our cups. Our cups are perfectly appropriate. <laughs> oh, Maggie mugs for the win. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. All right. Well, I think today we have uh, some amazing aspects to talk about that uh, we should just dive into. So let's uh, dive into burnout. Okay, so uh, since this is the road to retention and talking about burnout, um, a bunch of a, a bunch of people will talk about like how we keep newcomers uh, versus how we actually keep other members, uh, and I think they both are valid and both need to actually uh, have a little bit of triage done with them. Uh, one of the things that we don't end up talking about in retention a lot is burnout. Um, the SCA is a volunteer organization, and in that volunteer organization, uh, we don't tend to handle burnout of our volunteers very well. Uh, we, we are consumptive of our volunteers, uh, and we are consumptive of the people that are within the society, um, just for the fact that we're like, oh, cool, somebody else can do this job, and we hand it off. Exactly. Um, and so I think one of the things that we need to talk about within retention of the SCA is how we deal with each other when we're burnt out. Um, and so, and also how our burnout affects other people's plan, you know, uh, playing the game. Uh, cause that also is key. Cause when we're burned out, we tend to be a little bit toxic about the game and we will continue to show up, uh, and we will continue to do things, but we'll do it with the bitchiest fucking attitude. Um, and nobody likes that. Uh, and so one of my favorite things is don't be a fun vampire, uh, and also know your limits. Um, and one of the things that we can do. Uh, we'll talk about both aspects of this from the the being burned out versus helping with burnout. Uh, and so from being burned out, uh, one of the best and most healthy things we can do is ID it early, voice that we are burnt out, and either step away from what we are doing, help reshift the balance of what we are doing so we can take a little bit of time, or actually just walk away for a little bit. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that walking away yeah and we need also in the first part of like talking about being burnt out we need to do it in healthy ways uh a lot of us uh it's a very western uh, american culture to sit there and just be like well i'll just push through and i'll just do this and if i talk about it then i'm weaker and blah 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 no that, like, that's it, the john wayne philosophy the john yeah, wayne cowboy philosophy it, it doesn't like, work i mean please <laughs> notice Please notice, it doesn't fucking work. Um, one of the things that we need to do is start talking about it in healthy manners. When we're an officer, when we're just playing on a really like, because we invest our lives into this. Uh, and sometimes you need to actually be like, you know, maybe I need to not invest this season so much. Um, and our P we need to be able to say, I need to not invest so much this season and have our friends say, well, cool. Like, can uh, can we be supportive of this? Like, instead of being like, oh, well, you just need to keep pushing. Like, it'll get better. Show up to this event. No, like, let your friends take some weekends off. Like, yeah, well, it, it, and the expectation isn't for you to be 120%, 120% of the time. Yeah. Pick some you events to go to. You can only be the best you that you can give on that day. <laughs> yep. 
and pick some events to go to that you don't have responsibilities that you don't have and make sure you don't then assign yourself responsibilities. Um, <laughs> go I think you just called out like everybody in the audience. <laughs> Uh, most the biggest cycle in burnout and the reason why burnout exists is because we've stopped uh, we stopped with the ability to recognize our own boundaries and say no and then we continually put ourselves in that situation because every toxic situation is reinforced by our own toxic cycles ask me how i know that one. Oh, um, yep see one of our audience members felt that yep. look <laughs> and so one of the biggest gifts we can give ourselves when dealing with retention and burnout is by stepping back and giving ourselves the time to start seeing what we need to see in the SCA. Seek out the things that bring you joy. Go do the things. Stop fixing all the fires. Guess what? Other people are capable too, and you need to allow them to be capable. If you do not, you're just going to create that cycle again over and over and over. Well, and you're taking away that opportunity for them to grow. Yep. Let them mess up. So, oh, that, that is something that we're going to go over in reta uh, retaining newcomers and having retention within new officers uh, is let them mess up. So put a sticky note on that one because I have a soapbox. Whew. I love soapboxes. Uh, the other thing is I realized that I did not use my, my little lip stripe is not sticking the way it should. It wants to keep talking with my upper lip. Um, <laughs> one of the other things that we have to watch out for when we're burnt out is not selling the poison pill. We are our own arbiters of our fate within the society. And we create culture around us by what we do. Um, and especially uh, peers, I'm really calling you out. Upper end players, I'm really, really calling you out here. You create the environment for a lot of people. Um, and so when you're burnt out and you start talking about it in a toxic way, like, Oh my God, why did I ever take on this officer? So-and-so is such an asshole. Or, you know, I just hate this event and blah, blah, blah. Well, then why the fuck are you there? Why are you interacting with that person? Unless that person is causing a threat to somebody else, if you don't get along with them, just don't interact with them. Stop selling the poison pill to other people and creating divides. Because guess what? That doesn't create retention. When everything is a click there's not going to be retention because of it. So that's one of the big things is stop selling the poison pill about what is going on. If you hate an event, either know that you are burnt out and maybe you need to not be at that event or you need to put up or shut up and you need to get involved in the event. Those are exactly. kind of the two things. And that's how we start dealing with retention on a different level is we have to deal with our own like, yeah, we all want to bitch. We all want to be angry about something. Guess what? Do that behind closed doors. Do that not at an event. Tent walls are thin. People's feelings are thinner. Like, it's not going to help. Also, that newcomer that hears that, why would they want to hang out with somebody that's like that? Ask like the awful says, talking negatively never helps yourself. It only uh, brings others, you and others down. And it's, I mean... It's like taking food coloring in clear water. Your negativity being that little drop of food coloring. If you drip it in the water, now that water is the same color as your food coloring. You yeah. changed its attitude forever. And again, the things that are not the the things that don't fall into the poison pill is if somebody is actually a danger, we need to be dealing with that individual. This is not saying deal with toxic behaviors out of other people and just ignore them and walk on. That no. stuff still needs to be addressed. I'm saying when you are burnt out, we will tend to all be much more negative about everybody around us really watch out for that like it's basically don't become a mean girl don't get in the mean girls club don't get into the the clicky guys club like just address your own uh ability to stay out of that situation and again if an individual is still dangerous or an individual is actually causing the situation yes that needs to be addressed so and, you know. and it needs to be addressed as soon as possible by you know, the event steward, your seneschal, baron, king, prince, whoever is available. Yep. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of like my my thing on retaining old members or retaining like that mid ground members, like that first mm -hmm. round of burnout. That first round of burnout, we lose a lot of people because we don't give them the space to be burnt out. 
and we don't call them on their initial burnout behaviors. So if somebody's doing that a little bit where they're like, hey, they're poison pilling somebody, maybe you should talk to them about that and talk to them gently and be like, hey, are you a little burnout right now? Are you are you stressed? Because I you're talking really negatively right now. Can we can we change this? This is the other side of this coin, how we help our friends deal with their burnout well, is by addressing it with them because they may not see it yet. Hey, well, and newcomers, we don't give them, hey, like this is going to happen. Here mm -hmm. are the tools you need to cope with it. We don't, you know, help them identify that, that A, this is going to happen at some point in your SCA career. Mm -hmm. B, when this happens, you know, this is how we will help you cope. This, These are the people you can talk to. This is, you know, what you should do. These are your options, you yeah, know. And it's okay to step away. Yeah. How many how many long term players do you know that haven't taken a year or two off? How many long term players do you know that haven't taken a season off, like or just decided to go out of Kingdom events for a little while or something like that? We've all done it. It should be part of like the conversations we have with people when they start getting burnt out. Is like, hey, like I'm traveling to another kingdom. Can you figure out the plane ticket and I'll help you? I'll help you coordinate with somebody else. Maybe go into an out of kingdom events. What you need to see the Stardust again. Hey, I'm gonna go play. I'm gonna go play cards with that big pack of newcomers over there that you know that are not wearing a lick of linen or wool. It's all like poly blends. That is all poly blend over there. We're not gonna mention <laughs> shit about that. But we're gonna go over. We're gonna play cards and guess what? They're gonna give you the gift of their Stardust. It is insanely cool. Mm -hmm. It is insanely cool. You wanna know who I like partying with the most? The pirates and the newcomers. They are a gift to the society because they give no fucks. They are there to have fun. And it is just, it is so invigorating and so <laughs> amazing. Um, and just, oh. Well, and, and, and asking newcomers to experience something that they maybe would have never asked to experience. Like, hey, you know, I know this is only your first event. Would you like to come help me be lady in waiting? Hey, would you like to come help? the list minister or list mistress, you know, keep track of scores. Do you want to learn about, you know, marshaling? Hey, come here, come with me. Let's mm -hmm. do this. Let's check out what the feast steward's doing. Hey, you know, it makes a huge difference. It does. Um, so, and then, so does anybody have any questions about that out in the, out in the, out in the crowd or like comments or anything like that? Cause I'm happy to like go back and forth. I love, I love interaction in the comments, by the way. Ooh, uh, we have lots of different comments. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I do. See. I do like uh, Chris's uh, no, uh, no term or term limits are necessary. No one should ever have to be in a role for more than three years. I agree with this. Um, I agree also, as well. This, this goes into the retention of officers. Uh, this rolls really well into the retention of officers, actually. Of uh, You want to know the biggest burnout that you can do? Like, I've been I've been seneschal of our local barony. Holy crap, that was a job. Um, I'll yep. tell you, it's a super cool job, but also the amount of poison pills that I had to get through to get to that job and get to the information where people would be like, oh my god, it was so hard when I did it. I'm like give me the information I'm after and it will be easier for me. <laughs> like, um, but also like support of officers is how we don't burn out officers and we keep retention in our officers um, and murdering the idea, murdering it with aggression. The idea that our officers should do their job alone. Hell no. no officers get deputies. Should. Deputies. Like, you, as many deputies as you can get. Well, and as many deputies as you can get and also just team members. Like, I don't need somebody deputized to be like, cool, can you help me sort through paperwork? I'll buy the pizza. Like, just hang out at my house. I need to go through the paperwork and I need to digitize it. And I'm going to, like, 10 of us just over the, here, bring your laptops, bring your scanners. We are hammering through this. Or um, just come over and hang out while I do this and talk to me. Yeah. And so that's that's one of those things that, like, we can help with our officer retention by not treating our officers as free labor. Or pretending they're paid. Like, we are a volunteer organization. If we want retention of our officers, we need officer support. And we need loud officer support. Like, our officers are the reasons why events go off. Our event stewards are the reason why events go off. How we have insurance for those? Guess what? Officers. How do we have marshals on the field? Mm, officers. Officers. Like, this is how this goes. Like, we literally die if we don't have officer retention and or 
support staff retention. And we need to know that like our support staff should be the ones that we are catering to. They should not be catering to us ever. Like it doesn't go off without them. That'd be like having a house party without a house. Mm -hmm. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. Uh, Uh, Let's see here. Oh, we have a comment. It's not about exactly the officers, Mm -hmm. but uh, Jason Plansky asked, um, what about people who are regularly overlooked for awards over decades? And then people wonder why they aren't even are eager to come back. Uh, So (laughs) soapbox, Uh, (laughs) their friends need to send in those award recs. And instead of sending in the award rec where you're like, I'm just recommending this person for this, because this this has actually helped me a lot. Uh, again, I'm going to speak, uh, everybody drink. I'm going to say, when I was queen. <sighs> if I must. What, what helped a lot is I don't know everybody. Um, as much as people want to make fun of me and say that I know everybody, I do not. <laughs> um, right, when you write in the rules of award recs, tell them why. Tell them what that person has done. Tell them they've been overlooked for years or you feel that they're overlooked for years. We gave out AOAs to people that hadn't gotten their AOAs in 15 years because somebody was like, they've they've been playing for 15 years, but it's been behind the scenes. So nobody sees them. Your Royals aren't going to see everybody. Like we really wish we could. Like it is one of the most amazing things is like running into a, a longtime player that's never just hung out with a Royal. That's like, man, I've been playing for 10 years and I've never got to hang out with Royals and we just got to do this. Like, oh, so amazing. But one of the things you can do is when you're sending in those award recs, tell them why. Give them background. This person doesn't have an AOA, but they're volunteering at events. They're doing these other things. Like, they're supporting their local community. Yes, they don't play at big events, but they're playing on the local baronial level or the principality level. And this is helping support this. Can you, can we please see this happen? Also, give them the idea of when they're going to be where. Well, like, I know there's also that misconception, like... There are people that I assume have awards. Yeah. That um, don't have those awards. And, and you you think, oh, well, so and so's got this award. You know, they've been playing forever, you know. And then you find out they don't, and it's kind of a shock. Yeah. Also, ask your friends. Like, that's one of the like we have open conversations with our friends where I'm like, Do you have your AOA? No? Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Noted. I'll be back. Um, <laughs> But that's one of those things is like, again, we're not taught to talk about those things. It's like you never talk about your wages. One, you always fucking talk about your wages and you talk about your bonus structure. Don't ever let your employers lie to you and say don't. Like, (laughs) same thing with your awards. If you, like, start those conversations with somebody, just ask them, do you have your AOA? Like, Jesus Christ, like, you should have your AOA. Like, and they'll be like, no, you know, me, me. And like, okay, cool. Noted. Gonna fix that. Like, this is something that having that having those open conversations and being willing to ask people helps stop this cycle this cycle continues to happen when we think people are magic and should know so instead let's increase the pool of information and start having those conversations definitely uh looks like aslex says term limits i feel are very important uh uh for area and job dependent. They had a job for seven years and wanted to keep going. And there are certain positions in the SCA that, yes, it, you may want to be in that position for seven years, or you may want to only be in it for seven months. But at the same time, if you're in it for seven years, there might be somebody else who's been really wanting that job position for the whole seven years you've been in it. And if you don't give it up and share it, maybe that magic that somebody else could bring to that position isn't going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the same is sometimes a, like you can do a lot um, and you can not be burnt out in the job, but letting somebody else step in to that job, you can always take it back over after they've had their term. Yeah. Um, we don't have, uh, we don't have service limits. So it's not like you can't redo the job later. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of those things that I would really, I would really, if you're in a job for more than five years, I'd really start wondering like, is somebody else missing the opportunity? And can I do this again when they're done? Like, if you really liked it, do it again. Just keep the fresh blood rolling in there because it's actually going to be big for the SCA. Definitely. Uh, Milan Sammy says, there are a lot of expectations or demands on those who serve as uh, territorial nobility, even if they go out of kingdom. 
there's still an expectation that they perform and are on. I was about to say, uh, okay, so I have some very odd responses to this. Uh, <laughs> my bad. One, I don't know if I could ever be a territorial baron or baroness. Um, in the West, they are not treated as well as I wish they were. Um, and that's because I think we have too many, we have too many, uh, tiers. Uh, so we have baronies, principalities and kingdom. And so like, you kind of get lost in the, the like level of royalty we have. Mm -hmm. I think our barons and baronesses and those that are territorially serving are actually some of our most powerful nobility because they tend to meet our newcomers first. So one, I respect the job so fucking much uh dude they also have a lot put on them because they're literally one of the first sets of royalty that most people are going to meet um and then they aren't treated as that well um the idea that you always have to be on and like on in quotes uh, i'm going to tell you is a really weird falsehood that we sell ourselves within the sca you need to be respectful you don't have to be on um, but realistically, I, res I expect that most people will be respectful in general. Um, I don't think within the SCA that because you're a Baron or Baroness, because you're a Knight, because you're a Pelican, because you're a Laurel, because you're anybody at any point in time that you shouldn't be able to go out and actually relax and have fun. That is an incredibly toxic thing that we continue to sell ourselves. And that's the reason and it creates so much bad burnout because, oh, well, you're a Baron or Baroness, so you can't be out partying at night. Same with king or queen or anything else like that. You're just a bigger rep representative. So you need to be more accountable for your actions. So if you misstep, you must be more public about owning what occurred. The higher rank you are in that, the more you must publicly own what occurred and why and how you are making amends for it. And so that's what I would say is you don't need to be on. You have to be accountable. Well, um, and and there's regardless of, of what hat you're wearing at the time, you're still human humans you can't be this you know facade 24 7 and not expect to be burnt out from it mm -hmm. you have to allow yourself the grace to do the things that bring you joy to do the things that help you relax to you know have the social interactions that you don't have when you're on mm -hmm. yeah so uh, and so there was another one that came in uh, about the last one about uh, recommending awards. So I'm just going yeah, to go hop on that one. How do you recommend a person to become a Laurel or like, I'll actually say in general, a peer. It is the same way. You go onto that, you go onto that thing, you write the letter uh, and write the letter of why. Why do you feel that they should be a peer? Why? Uh, and not, I will tell you, don't sell your own poison pill here. I'm going to use this term so many times during this talk. If you think somebody should be a Laurel, you want to know what shouldn't be in your letter? You guys have fucked up by them not being here. Ugh. Instead, write it a little bit like a report. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, they comport themselves as a peer. They represent the kingdom as a peer. Here is what they do. This is the reason why I think they should be a laurel. This is the reason why I think that their work is a pelican or a knight or a mod or, 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 or. You can do this for you know, court baronies. You can do this for your mid-level awards, your grant-level awards. And this is the thing that I'll tell you. that it, it helped me a lot getting award recommendations in where people actually took the time to tell me why. Because if I don't know the person or the person's off in the far reaches of the kingdom and I haven't gotten to interact with them, having a, having a note of like, this is how they comport themselves as a peer. This is how they carry themselves and they change the group and everything else like that is huge. Because then you can take that to the councils and be like, hey, this person who is not a peer sees this person as a peer. As a peer. And this is the letter that we're coming to. Also, knowing which person to write in the local councils is big. Kingdom to kingdom all has different ways they deal with council. So in the West, you send it in to the king and queen. Also, I would say probably send it to a couple, couple people within the group. Um, that you trust to be like, hey, I would like to submit this letter. I'm also submitting it to the king and queen. Um, we'll go from there. And a lot of those people will take it to council and then they'll be like, hey, so-and-so, or, you know, person unnamed normally, actually, they don't tend to throw people under the bus, um, has written a letter about this candidate um, or this person that is not on the list. Maybe it is time to put them on the list. Um, and so that will help a huge deal <laughs> because they will have the information to take to council and present.
So well, that would be and, that would be how I would do that. And that's kind of for any award. Like if you don't even know what award this person deserves, but you know they need to be recognized, giving that breakdown of who this person is and what they do and how they do it and the impact, you know, how they impact the group or kingdom or principality or barony or canton, doesn't matter. Having all that information helps individuals get that big picture of yep. who that person is. Uh, and apparently there was a hidden soapbox in this. Uh-oh. <laughs> on the road to retention, stop shitting on people for wanting awards. Some people, so this is a spectrum. And this is where this is where the soapbox comes in. The spectrum is people that need nothing to do it. They are driven by it and the idea. And they will never need a single, they will never need a single reward. And then there are the people that want the damn merit badges. Guess what? They are both completely valid and everybody on there is in a spectrum of it. Mm -hmm. People should be able to say, I would love to be recognized by this. Mm -hmm. And then be able to hear the conversation of like, well, you are not there yet. Yeah. It's a two-way street. But if we tell people, well, you shouldn't be doing it for the cookie. That is terrible. That is so terrible. I would, I love that people want to get their AOAs. I love that people want to become peers. Everything else like that. If they didn't want to be the thing, which by the way is the cookie. <laughs> Hello. If they didn't want to be the thing or get the thing or earn the thing, why are they doing it? It's okay to say that. It is, te mm -hmm. it is terrible. The, the idea that we are like, we should be silently toiling towards a goal without ever <laughs> voicing that we want the goal so we can't get feedback is bullshit. It is a giant level of bullshit. And the only order that doesn't have this is the knights. Why are you a squire? To eventually be a knight. Why are you a protege or an apprentice to eventually be that thing? Uh, it, for mods, it's... Uh, cadets? Cadets, students? thank you. Thank you. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember the, the word for it. I've one. heard it as both. Yeah, it, it's, there's a couple of them. But why would you be that thing if you didn't want to get to that? Some people will do it for the experience of, like, they want, they want the job. Um, or the or that thing and the idea to experience it, but we need to stop telling people that they shouldn't voice that they are actually they want to earn something within the SCA. It's okay to want that. Okay. I apologize. The sliding oh. was. <laughs> You're totally fine. Like I used to like halfway between two peers, I'd be like, I am done with this, and I am done with this, and I am done with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have the, the the adult language disclaimer. Apparently, robot can't keep clothes on tonight. Disclaimer yeah. should pop up. Um. And also part of that thing is if those people are vocal about it, also teach them to how to how to have the conversations about feedback. Oh, provost. It's provost in ah. Milan Sammy's area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's like it's a two-way street again, but like part of that retention isn't telling somebody, well, you shouldn't want the old word. Why not? Like. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't understand. So I should just quietly not do this then? We have two points where it's like, well, three. You shouldn't be doing it for the cookie. Then why the cookie? Um, and then thank you for saying that. There are those who do this to be seen and to get the cookie, it helps their self esteem. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Milan said, just like job promotion, there's nothing wrong with working towards and aspiring towards a goal. Like, you dress for the job you want if you're looking for that promotion. You start making yourself look better. You start selling yourself. Well, people know you're doing it because you want the promotion. Why not be vocal about it? I mean, like, because hey, it's, a very, it's a very, you know, like mundanely standard practice within Western cultures that you don't voice what you want, that you must earn it through toil and hardship and quietly pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, which, by the way, is an impossible task. <laughs> like, drives me insane. <laughs> so. and yes also by the way you're going to be somewhere on that spectrum that i just talked about all the way from like oh i don't do it for the cookie all the way to like i want the merit badge which is mm -hmm. okay just understand where you're at and make sure that you're working within a group that feeds how you need feedback definitely
So there you go. There, there's my, uh, you're going to have so many soapboxes about this. I prepared like two points and already like have just, <laughs> oh, I'm off into the weeds. Well, and somebody points out too, getting that cookie lets others know that there are ways to be recognized for what you do and what you've accomplished. Yes. I love it. All right. So we want to get back to burnout. <laughs> You're driving this bus. I'm just here to be like. <laughs> All right. Back on burnout. Um, let's talk about burnout differences for new players versus older players because there's a huge kind of different ways to handle it different ways to identify it different things that cause it so everybody's gonna like this is not to be like try to brush this off everybody's gonna burn out a little differently than other people uh and this involves like your communication style, uh, what groups you're in, how you take feedback, and how you also voice your boundaries. Uh, and so I'm going to say that actually, kind of in general, we see burnout. Um, I do have I do have an aging with grace thing here. Yes. Um, but we'll start with newcomers. Like newcomers yes. are typically burned out when they're dropped into positions. When they're like, "Oh my God, you're new here. Cool, you can be this job, and I'll teach you how to do it." And then nobody teaches them how to do it. Or we put somebody in a position too quickly um, with too little training. Or here's the bad one that we do. We put somebody that is starry-eyed in a position and has ideas. And then we tell them they can't do their ideas and that they have to fall into line. That's soul crushing. <laughs> Back the fuck off those people. Like seriously, let Don't them try their new crush. ideas. <laughs> let them try something new. Help and support them. Make sure they're not violating any rules. That's fine. Like, that's an easy one to do. Be like, cool, this, this is actually like, you can't do this one. This is the reason why. I'm not personally telling you you can't do this. Like, literally our rules say you can't do this. Um, But give them the freedom. They're the ones that are giving the volunteer space. Like, cool, mm -hmm. I want to do this and I want to database this. And somebody would be like, well, we've always tracked it this way. Well, maybe there's a more efficient database to use. Oh. oh my god shocking technology well um, and and there, right away cal points out let the office fail as long as it doesn't break the rules yeah and sometimes it just needs to happen it's okay well um, sometimes people don't know a system's broken until it fails maybe there is a different way to do it right Realize I'm, I need to deal with the tea, my tea bag because my tea bag keeps bonking me in the nose. Don't. I thought you had like a little like, you know, this is my cup back off kind of tag dangling from your handle. No, no, I'm actually I'm, I'm like drinking tea and being all official and stuff. And like I, I tie, it's a really deep cup. And so like, the, like tea, the tea bag sits right here. Yeah. And so when you get down in a level of tea, all of a sudden you're like, bap, bap, bap. And you know what? <laughs> That's not what I want to be taken to the face. Understood. <laughs> yeah. I hope somebody at home like snorted a drink over that. I hope so as well. Um, <laughs> so. Oh yeah. It's, we've always, always done it this done way is incredibly, way. incredibly, it, it feeds burnout. We've always done it this way. Doesn't allow new ideas to come up. And guess what? We're no. 55 years old now, like 56 years old. I mean, I'm not, and you're not, but no, the society yes, it. itself. Yeah, the society. <laughs> the society now has it's multi generational. Um, we've always done it. Doesn't work anymore because guess oh. what? Thirty years ago, we didn't have the internet presence. Hell, ten years ago, we didn't have the internet presence. Which means, and yes, I did just teabag myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. And we need new ideas. And guess what? Technology is changing the face of the SCA incredibly quickly. Maybe we should let our newer members play around with the ideas. Like, I love that TikTok is turning into a huge recruiting force. I love TikTok. Like, <laughs> during the pandemic, all the online shows have done really good things. You know how many newcomers I got to meet at my first, like, my first event back that were like, hey, I'm here because I found you guys online. What? <laughs> yes! I mean... So, for example, I knew who you were. I had heard your name multiple times from multiple acquaintances. But the second between two peers went online, there's this person that I 
heard of that I could actually see and, 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 you know, engage with comments and then eventually have opportunity to meet. And, you know, it, it's a different age than it was when I started playing in 92. <laughs> like, well, in be between two peers actually probably got me to stay in the SCA longer. Because I realized that I was dealing with a huge amount of burnout right before the pandemic. The pandemic was actually a gift to me. Um, well, it, burnout's not a horrible thing. It, it's that opportunity to, to pause. Mm -hmm. Take a breath. Well, and organize I your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, my burnout was not. <laughs> I, mean, I, swore, I swore fealty to my kingdom eight times in four, uh, three and a half years. Yeah, like high levels of princess, pelican, uh, queen, knight, queen again. And so in there, there's the other three oaths for my three royal peerages. Like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, and I got totally lost. That whole burnout thing. Oh, I was there. I was so there. And I was just like, well, you know, I should keep pushing. And then I was buying the thing where everybody would be like, okay, cool. When are you going to win crown for Hans? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? And I'm like, oh, I got to keep pushing. I got to keep pushing. I got to keep pushing. And I was angry. And also I wasn't like, if you'd met me before the pandemic, I'd never wear makeup like this. Involved in the SCA, I would never wear makeup like this. And then more and more along in the show, I realized that I'm like, Society for Creative Anachronism. Like, Somebody asked if there was such a thing as COVID burnout. Oh, there's totally a thing called COVID burnout. Totally. It's a huge, there's and, a huge study on it. You should check it out. And it's right. not just SEA having COVID burnout. I mean, my I, I have a therapist. My therapist said, hey, there's a new disorder that is, you know, mm -hmm. COVID anxiety, long-term COVID fi fatigue, you know, COVID depression. So it definitely happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just because we're in the SCA, yeah, it doesn't affect our game, but I mean, it affects people regardless of their walk of life. Yeah. So we have a little backtrack here to the Stardust. Gundren said that I've tried to be careful about making sure that I didn't do that to my hubby. Experiencing that Stardust is so important. Yep. And, and Cal points out it's so hard because he plays differently. And this is, Cal had mentioned that he had a newbie that he brought with a, to an event and he did his same old, same old, and she didn't necessarily get to experience the Stardust. So. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's one of those things is when people have the Stardust, don't fucking kill it for them. No. Like, oh. Let them do it. They may fix yours. Like, so I, no joke. I you may be like, Oh, <laughs> why everybody is wearing like, when you know, you're burnt out, when garb is no longer like you're putting on something where you're like, oh, this is fucking amazing. When you're putting on a funny looking bathrobe, that's when you're burnt out. When you look at your garb, you're like, that's funny looking bathrobe. Whoo, punch the brakes there, dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're and, probably burnt out. And, um, and, and so, you know how you get kind of fueled on spite sprinkles? Mm -hmm. I get fueled on that stardust. I have told uh, His Majesty Sean this weekend at an event that. At his coronation, the moment that he had um, two newcomers hold the the crowns while he did his fealty oath, and the look of stardust on their eyes, that look of wonder and, you know, um, just sheer joy and bliss, was like, oh my god, oh my god, my dream is that much better, it's more mm -hmm. awesome again, holy cow, give me more! Yeah, people that are excited about the SCA are like mainlining any drug of choice. Yes, like they're just <laughs> awesome. Definitely. Um, and now people have questions out there. Um, they do. <laughs> uh, so the one thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, I gave you a sticky note on this one. You did. The uh, you want to do oh, the aging with grace? Aging with grace. Aging with grace. Okay, cool. So we have like our old, our, our like. Old in quotes. Uh, we're gonna have our our seasoned members, uh, our vintage vintage members. There we go. Uh, Ooh, like fine I don't wine. know. Sometimes when they say that things from the eighties are vintage, it really makes me feel. <laughs> I'm vintage. Not okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, because old not worth as much. Vintage, whew, man, we could sell ourselves for way more now. All right, we'll go with that then. That's the theory. All about perspective. <laughs> um. 
<laughs> so aging with grace. This is something that we need to allow our members to age with grace. Because if we want to retain our older members, our members that are like, back in my day, like we used to set up the Eric like this. If we want to retain them, you want to know what? Start having those conversations and be like, okay, cool. Like, tell me how you did that. But also aging with grace is allowing our knights to no longer have the prowess that they once had. And not constantly being like, well, maybe you should go train harder. or You're just getting old. Yeah. Duh. And so will you. No fighter will stay on top their entire life unless they die in a car wreck. Well, and... and like, and no, I want our old knights to stick around. I want our old pelicans to stick around. I want our old laurels and our old mods and our old, like, somebody that never got an award. I want our pirate ships to be around. Like, you want to know what I want? I want all the pirates from the uh, the 90s to show back up and be like, man, back in our day, we used to throw some major parties. And I'd be like, how can I fund this? Mm -hmm. Like, yep. let's go. I Allowing them to say that, but also understanding, like, having part of the conversation that's like, cool, well, you know, now we do it a little differently because of X, Y, and Z. Have those conversations. Don't lose that knowledge. But also with like our older peers making fun of old pelicans because, oh, you know, you're not doing as much as you used to. No, they put in 20 years worth of work. Allow them to retire and find the stardust of a different age. They may sponsor somebody. They may, they may help somebody else do what they cannot. This also, amusingly enough, deals with our members that eventually become disabled or are disabled. This deals or with our members injured. that that may not be able to financially play as much as when they retire. Like mm -hmm. we need to allow people to change what they do in the SCA with grace. And that Definitely. grace does not come from them. Should they not be bitter? Yes. That is their burnout to deal with. Should we not throw it in their face? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should not throw it in their fucking face. Instead, we need Agreed. to figure out how to invite them back and continue to do that. Cause one day we're going to be that person. We're going to be there. I started playing when I was 15. How I played when I was 15 is completely different than how I play now. Good God. By orders of magnitude different. But do I still want to be able to have a conversation with 15-year-old self? Yeah. Do I also want to you know, be valid now? Yeah. Do I also want to go kick it on the Eric with Fleeg, who was at the first event? Yes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I want him to be like, well, back in my day, I'd be like, yep, back in your day. Um, give it know, to me Fleeg. we yeah, want to hear go. the stories like, we want to have these conversations <laughs> but one of the things that we have to do is by having those conversations we give them a way to continue to stay valid in a part of the society without also turning it into a cultural war like yeah. cool great like things it's, have it's... changed i still want to know why they are the way they were or, you know why they are the way they are now and why they were the way they were then you know and the history behind it yeah. I, I, I was blessed uh, yesterday at um, Artemisian Queen's Prize at Twelfth Night to have an amazing Laurel and Baroness from Kalantir say, hey, do you know where this originated from? And I was like, no, please tell me. And she told me the story. She was the one that started it in Kalantir. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And she told me the whole story behind it and able, was able to um, give me a token to remember it by and oh my god i uh, she's probably gonna get this facebook request for me and be like hey will you be my new best friend <laughs> because she's just a wealth of knowledge and she was amazing mm -hmm. speaking oh don't rat me out like oh what'd that. you get what'd you get um, his majesty and her majesty uh sean and nisa yesterday at 12th night um broke me broke me hard. Um, they awarded me um, the grant level arts and science award in the kingdom of Artemisia, the key cross. Congratulations. And his majesty gave me his key cross medallion. Oh, did you cry? You cried. I did cry. Damn it. Oh, solid. Solid. <laughs> Those are tears that you want to drink in. And, um, and then to top it off, the scroll was done by one of my good friends, um, Sir Tierlock, who I actually had the privilege of doing a scroll for him for Harvest uh, War. And that broke me more. <laughs> and it was uh, just as amazing. So between Sean and Nisa, who are incredible monarchs, and the words that they shared with me uh, and, and the scroll and 
the, the lineage on his the key cross that he gave me. I I was broke. And nice. I'm very, I still haven't come, I haven't put the words together. I haven't done a Facebook post or a TikTok on it yet because I'm like, I don't, I don't have all the words. I have all the feels, but not all the words. <laughs> <laughs> you had to herald the elevation right after. <laughs> I did. And That's the best. so my voice is kind of a, a high squeaky voice generally. You know, I can kind of modulate it a little bit, but after I cry, my voice goes from this to like, hello, like it drops. <laughs> <laughs> hello, I am Bane. So, yeah, not quite the uh, Tom Hardy voice, you know, that would be kind of cool, actually. But, I mean, you could definitely tell. And then the words left my head and I had to look at my phone and I get kind of dyslexic. And, and <laughs> it almost was a little bit of a, a stumble to get all the words out. So thank you for bringing that up, whoever brought that up. Um, <clears throat> I love you. Thank you for. Yeah. <laughs> So is there, is there any other topics you wanted to hit? I, I gave you a couple sticky notes beforehand and my brain, I, I am so ADHD. I'm just like. <laughs> Let's talk about burnout caused by frustration. Mm, this goes into communication then. It does. Penelope, I love you, your excellency. You're, you're evil and wicked. Uh, also, I will I will just ask. Uh, so I understand we're cl we're closing in our hour really really quickly. Um, I am happy to continue to pontificate like some asshole on this side of the side of the the mic, um, but I want to make sure that we continue to entertain the audience as well as you. Uh, and so just tell me to shut up whenever you'd like me to shut up. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm fine with going a little bit longer. Uh, this game is going in overtime. Oh oh. oh. Uh, Richard just asked an amazing question. Can we get this one before we talk about um, some uh, some signs of dealing with burnout? Yes. Awesome. How do you ease back long-term players who are coming back after five years being gone? Holy crap. Welcome them back. Like, for reals. Um, and if there's stuff that's changed, like five plus years, there's always stuff that's going to be changed. This changed. Mm -hmm. um, politely. Definitely correct behavior um because most people want to come back if they're coming back they're coming back because they loved it and they missed it um and they're going to come back with a learning mindset as much as anything else like that if they come back with like whether like well but back in my day literally just be like <laughs> blink blink I, I can hear those lashes blinking <laughs> oh yeah no it's one of my favorite things to do is just be like okay <laughs> Um, but when easing people back in that really want to be back in and are like excited to be back is just like newcomers, like introduce them to the new players, introduce them to the new unbelts, the new, you know, the new apprentices, the new, uh, hang on. I got to scroll back up. Provost. Provost? Yes. Okay. Yes. Ha. Uh, you know, introduce them to the, the people that are introduce them to those newcomers, introduce them to like, who's been King for the last couple of years, get them back onto a level of understanding who's playing what right now. Um, and just make seat at the, you know, make room at the table for them. Like that's, that's huge. I mean, they, they were one of your fellow players and friends five years before. Yeah. Just don't ex have the expectation that you would of that person five years ago, have that expectation of them like a newcomer so that they aren't going to feel like, oh, you're back. Well, I've got this office that needs to be filled and I've got this, you know, I need a server for this feast and an autocrat yeah. for this event. That's actually you, know. kind of, you hit the nail on the head there. When people are coming back to play, don't give them a job. That goes for our newcomers. That goes for our did we decide antique or vintage 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 that goes for our vintage players don't because vintage is trendier than antiques uh ah, true 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 uh so don't give them jobs right back out the gate unless they ask like can i help with this yeah like i'm looking for a deputy but it's not a big thing right now like i want you to enjoy protect them as you would want to be protected coming back Definitely. do not do the thing that you would leave the society for do not do the thing that would create your burnout. Understand that and understand that we are taught the absolute opposite because we are taught to hand things off to other people as soon as they come back. It's all one big thing. No, no, no. Like there are consumers and there are producers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And occasionally everybody needs to be consumptive of the magic of the game. 
And that's okay. Definitely. doesn't matter what stage you're at in the game from like newcomer all the way to vintage. Cause that's our new saying vintage mm -hmm. um, is sometimes you need to be a consumer. Go to that event. When they come back, don't give them a job. I don't care how many times they've been sent a shawl before they took a five year break. Don't hand them back that job. Good God. Like, and you know, same with occasionally we all need to be producers. Sometimes you're a producer just by asking somebody if they've eaten for the day. Like, do you need a place to sit? You, all the way to taking Kingdom Seneschal, because Kingdom Seneschal is definitely the, the one that I'm just like, that job's for, for professionals, and we should pay them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but treat them with the same stardust you would want to be welcomed back with. Just give them yeah. the space. Give them the stardust. Let them be consumptive for a little while and come back. They will set their own pace again. Do that, and we will keep them forever. Definitely. Love it. Love it. Somebody went back to the about aging gracefully. The plus it gets harder to camp and do all the physical setup. <laughs> Genevieve, I totally understand. And it's not necessarily even, I mean, definitely the aging with grace. It, you have to understand our bodies have a kind of a cap, a limitation. Our minds necessarily don't. No. Right. So our personality, our mind, we still want to do all the things that we did at 17. But, you know, I'm sorry. My mom is 70. I love her. She's spunky and feisty as heck. She would want to do all the things herself. But I know she'd pay the price for trying to do all the things herself, like setting yeah. up a camp. Uh, so the thing that kind of occurred to me is we use the term all the time. It takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to age gracefully. It does. And it takes kindness. It takes kindness because it involves more volunteer hours from those that can. It also involves us understanding when somebody cannot. We are willing to do this when somebody is in a sling or walking around on crutches. We should also be able to do this with our aging members in a way that they still feel welcomed. That will be one of the biggest gifts that we can ever give to the society because the society is getting older. And we, to keep those members and to keep them around so newcomers can meet our heroes, we will need to make sure that we make accommodations for that. Yeah, we don't make fun of when somebody asks, hey, is this site wheelchair accessible? Like, or, don't or, be a shit heel. Don't be shitty no. in those comments. If somebody asks that publicly, figure it out. Get them the answer. Don't be a shit. Or a, like, a merchant who, you know, needs a little extra help getting, you know, their merchandise brought into site and set up and then brought out a side at the end like do the favor and and help them or get them help mm -hmm. i mean i would like to think when i need help down the road i'm gonna have somebody who's there for me because i do my damnedest to make sure that other people get that from me or mine now yeah well, i mean and that's that's gonna be it'll be an interesting thing to see how that happens and i'm hoping that I'm hoping this conversation leaves a little bit of an impression, but you know, <laughs> uh, we also, <laughs> we also have another good question in here is how do you encourage people who have recently moved to a new kingdom? Because this is also part of retention. It is indeed. It's that cross kingdom Ooh. retention. Itty bitty soapbox. Okay. Soapbox time. Hold on. I gotta get my drink. I should have when, moving to a new when moving to a new kingdom, delete out the saying in my kingdom or in my old kingdom, Blah, 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 blah. On uh, the other side of that, set aside your own personal biases about somebody else's kingdom that they just moved from. Because we shouldn't have a culture war to prove that somebody is worthy to be around. Instead, welcome them and go from there. Like, reach out. Like, we have this, we have this amazing, amazing shithole called the internet. Um, like, it has allowed shows like this to happen, which is mm -hmm. one of the biggest gifts. And then, not that I'm on it right while, wow, that felt like a huge ego stroke. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Careful, your yet. internet will freeze at that moment. Oh, God, it would. It just told me what. <laughs> but, like, we also have a huge network. The pandemic has given us more broken barriers about kingdoms than ever before. Mm -hmm. So when moving to a new kingdom, if somebody's new there and posts on the Baronial site, hey, I just moved here, reach out to them. Uh, mm -hmm. This is also the other thing that we wait for all the time. Uh, the SCA is full of awkward geeks. All we are is awkwardly geeking at each other about our little niche geek. Like, <laughs> 100%. We, 
we assume that somebody else that is more popular than us will reach out to that newcomer. Instead, let's make it a fanfare. Everybody reach out. Hey, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm located in this chunk of the barony. Like, welcome to the group. If we all do that, if all of us respond to that, guess what? They're going to feel welcomed. Also, they're going to have resources. Oh, excuse me. Instant resources to that new location. And so I will say that when you move to a new location, find your local barony, post in your local barony or principality, um, and then ask for introductions. Even if you have to start that conversation more, I would love to know everybody that's here. Please respond with like where you're at. What are you into? Like, I would like to get to know you guys because I would like to play. Um, that's <laughs> kind of huge. Somebody says if everyone did that to me, I would go hide. <laughs> Does not like attention. And that's okay. a communication style. I mean, and that's also understanding your communication style. And so, like, if you're if you're one of the people that doesn't want big amounts of communication, maybe then reaching out to your local barony, not in a public forum, is probably the way to go. Um, however, if you want the big fanfare, reach out in a public forum. Like, that's that's what I would do there. Definitely. Look at all our oh. comments here. Uh, Another one back so, to the aging when you want to do the things but you can't do it. That is more frustrating when you find the things that you want to do you can't do, and it it, it it's almost paralyzing, you know, emotionally, and then just rips you apart a little bit. And you have to allow yourself grace as well, like just because you can't doesn't mean you can't find other people who can. And yeah. sometimes that action of finding other people who can do the physical service that you're not able to do, that is the game changer for whatever situation. Like somebody needs help packing up their vehicle. Well, it's got a bunch of heavy things that I can't with an injury lift. Mm -hmm. I can't do it, but I can find people that can do it. Also, bring bribes. Oh, like, bri chocolate. Chocolate, cheese, beer. <laughs> cider. Like, cider, bring mead. Bribes. Like, sometimes sometimes you can't. Tootsie but rolls. You can, bri you can be like, hey, in my truck, I have two packs of cider and two beers and a hunk of cheese. I need help setting up this pavilion. All shall be yours. Like, get pirate on them. Like... For reals. And make fun. Like, also, one of the things that we don't do, and this this falls into, it raise, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it also takes a village to take care of our elders. Um, we are not, like, again, we're going to go to the back to that Western mundane society. We do not talk about or teach people how to age with grace. You are expected to produce until you die. Fuck capitalism. Sorry. Um, uh, no. <laughs> I'm going to piss off somebody there. Um, <laughs> but... We're not, like, we're not going to produce until the day we die. You want to know what I'm going to produce, like, produce when I'm older? Probably a lot of, like, back in my day, we throw flat snap like this. Like, that's what I'm going to fucking produce. And I'm going to make sure that I got beer and everybody wants to sit around and we're going to bullshit about the good old days on the Estrella field and everything else like that. I still want to have fun. I still want to be involved in the SCA when I can't be on the field. Maybe, you know. When I've got to be like, I can't set up this pavilion, so I'm getting a fucking hotel room. Um, and so that's one of those things is it takes a village to have our people age gracefully. It, it takes a village to retain our older members that may need a little bit of help. And there's nothing wrong with it. Like, to take care of our elders and to take care of our people that aren't completely able to fend for themselves, guess what? We should be doing that. We that that is nightly. That is pure like behavior there to Definitely. take care of the people that are a part of the society and gave before you. Maybe they can't give it the same level, but guess fucking what? They were you're the sorry. Wow, did I just get pissed off? Like, I noticed. <laughs> we are here because of them. Exactly. Our society is here because of the people that came before us. And if we don't make room for them to stay, we are fucking worthless well, i'm sorry that's one of those things like away. to not make room for the people that put the time and energy and effort to keep the society going before i was even fucking born like that's wrong that is so wrong it is unreal 
those and we're memories throwing away still belong. Knowledge. Right. We're throwing away experience and wisdom. We're throwing away stardust. It's not brand new, but it's there. And those moments still happen. Yeah. I want to hear about old Australia. Like, God damn. Have you ever asked some of the old timers about wars they fought with where they were fighting with welding gloves instead of gauntlets? With propane helmets, propane yeah. tank helmets and carpet. Oh, oh my God. Like, there, there is nuts things out there. There's nuts things. And I love hearing about them. So, yes, there's my soapbox. And there is where apparently I got super angry. Because, like, <laughs> I, fe I felt that emotion welling up. Good thing my eyeliner is on point. So, we're going to skip a question but come back to it. What if the vintage players want nothing to do with the younger folks? Let them have their space. It's kind of like... Season of players who don't necessarily get along with other people or they enjoy being at an event but not interacting. Mm -hmm. You have to this think of it as if a person has a, a sensory processing disorder, they may want to go to the event. They may sit in the corner. They may complain. They may act out. You know? They may be distracting, but they're happy because they're there. No. Also, and you one have of the things to oh, sorry. Them play how they play. They play the game on the level that they choose to play. Uh, so this would be a respect conversation. Um, so we can't treat the Eric like pie is the thing. Um, and so there are going to be some people that don't want to interact with other groups, and that's fine. But we also can't then territorially divide the event, if that makes sense. Um, and so it isn't like, oh, the old guys are over here, so we can't, we all have to be quiet by 10. No, okay, there's quiet space for that. So if somebody is needing the quiet zone, they need to know to camp in that. Yes. Like, you can't camp at a party zone and then be like, oh, you guys are up past 10. Like, yeah, because we camp in the party area. Go away. <laughs> um, and that's one of those things is we all have to figure out the lines and then respect them. We cannot own the entire event. We cannot say like, cool, like somebody that has sensory problems. No, you get, you get your corner. That's the thing. But the entire event isn't going to grind to a halt over that. Like, unless it's an emergency and same with our older players that don't want to, don't want to deal with the newcomers. Okay. So like we have made quiet Eric space and we have made, mm -hmm. Cloud Eric space, understanding that noise travels or at an event. Okay. Um, so that's that's one of those things is it has to be a respect conversation. It has to be, we need to know our own lines so we can create the environment without taking over the environment. Definitely. And then let's go back to Rose Smith's, uh, Rosa's question. She wants to hear about frustration-based burnout and how to process and come back from it. Oh, yes. You mean like what every student goes through because we have a terrible vetting process that's totally fucking public even though we pretend it's secret? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is why nobody wants me on their shows. <laughs> uh, you are more than welcome to come back. I uh, have zero issues with that. And so frustration-based burnout is typically conversational-based is what I would actually put it as, is that's where expectate you are hearing one thing, but the expectations are something else. Uh, and so what I would say is that frustration-based burnout needs to be, you need to be able to voice your lines and what you want, and then you have to find people that can have those same conversations with you. Um, and this is uh, the, the, the biggest living example that I have of this is how my knight and I conversed while I was an unbelt. Um, and I was squared to Hebeck. Uh, and originally I was squared to Mari and then I was squared to Havek. Uh, and I was very, very glad that he is a very cut and dry teacher uh, and was very knowledgeable of the fact where he's like, nope, you're not there yet. I don't care how many knights tell you you're there. These are the reasons why. And so, because one of the biggest vetting we have um, and the biggest public vetting we have in the mode, like where we have a lot of burnout is as our students near peerage. Because all the peers come to the students and they're like, 
There's just this, there's just this one thing. This one thing. And guess what? That doesn't help. That helps create burnout because you're not telling them what they're not doing. You're not telling them, you know, why they need to do that thing. And we're very bad at that in this society. We're incredibly bad at telling somebody, look, you got a fucking attitude problem. Like, and this is how it's presenting. And this is what's coming across. Or your work's actually not there yet. We want to see a little bit of difference in how you're, you know, doing your documentation. And can I help you with this? And like... Or like, oh, hey, no, you're actually not there. That person's lying to you. Like, we want to be helpful and supportive. Believe me, everybody wants to see somebody else make, make it being a peer. Everybody does. It's like the biggest thing. It's like, we want to be like, cool, you want to be part of the cool kids club? Like, or cool kids club in quotes. Because believe <laughs> me, it's weird. It's super weird. Um, like, <laughs> you want to be here? Word. Sweet. Like, <laughs> let me give you my one thing. And then, but also a lot of the times that one thing is a super selfish thing. A lot of people want to see somebody else succeed so they can say, well, that person succeeded because of me. If you turn on that lens, a lot of the times when you're coming back from that frustration, you realize that the communication was poor. Somebody was saying, yeah, you're doing a good job. But really it says, yeah, but... And that's, that's a really hard thing. You have to be able to stay with your people that you trust and understand that sometimes you're going to get hard feedback. And so coming back from that burnout, where basically you were led with hope. When we lose hope, it is one of the hardest things to come back from. And then we see this a lot, a lot, again, with our students that are on the brink of becoming a peer and then burn out, is they burn out because hope was sold to them over and over and over again. And they tried to meet that hope. Instead, they should have had a hard conversation and they should have had a space where they could be frustrated and they could express their, their needs and they could do other things in that. And so they could then get back on the path. And so when you're coming back from burnout, when you're coming back from that loss of hope is don't go back to the same toxic cycle that led you to it. When you come back and that person goes, oh, hey, oh my God, I'm so glad you're back. You're like right there. Just be like, nope. I'm working on the negative feedback right now. Or I'm not, I'm not pursuing that. And that's perfectly fine. It is so good to say, I'm not pursuing that on your level. Definitely. I'm not pursuing that the way you think I need to. And that's okay. Don't die on somebody else's hope and understand when you do. And I realize that this is really like super existential is <laughs> your lines will be violated because of hope. Well, if I just push past, if I just, if I just do this thing one more time, one more time, one more time, fuck the one more time, step away, find your center again and come back knowing that so much more. Because when that person tries to sell you hope again, you're going to be like, that's fucking snake oil. <laughs> it's that toxicity. Don't give mm -hmm. it to me. Don't want it. Also on the other side is anybody that hears this, don't sell snake oil. Stop that. Stop that super hard. If that person is just on the brink, shut the fuck up. They will do it themselves. Stop Stop creating the problem that we all hate. Every person in that situation hates that when it comes up. Every single person. I can guarantee you, like, as a student, you've had somebody come and be like, oh, my God, you're so close. Just keep pushing the way you're pushing. Stop it. If you're about to walk over and tell that to somebody, stop it. Don't do it. It doesn't help them at all. They will continue doing it. Go from there. Sorry. Love it. And she had a secondary comment to that. She was thinking more about local groups trying to get more from you when you are giving everything without getting support. Tell them no. Yeah. No is you, a powerful uh, word. There comes a point where you, if you are doing everything for your local group and they are not supporting you, and if you've drawn that hard line and said, I need you to step up. I cannot do this alone. And it they won't. You know what? Let the group fail. Mm -hmm. If it causes the group to go to dormancy, it causes them to go to crown lands. Let them fail. Your health and mental sanity is worth way more and physical. You can't do it all. Yep. 
Um, and telling them no, if they freak out when you say no, they're just going to continue violating barriers. Like, and that's, that's a bad sign. Say no, keep doing what you're doing, do what feeds you and go from there. And sometimes, yes, our jobs are hard and we don't want to do it. Believe me, totally understand that one. Definitely. But also you need to know when enough is enough. And to think that you are not giving enough is very bad and very dangerous because you're going to try to reach beyond and then you're going to get burnt out and walk away. Um, and then we lose a member and we lose somebody that could continue co to contribute. And so talk to friends, make sure you're setting good boundaries. Cause that's one of the things is occasionally we set terrible boundaries. So talk to your friends, like check in with your friends and be like, Hey, I feel like this is boundary setting time. And then go from there. Like it's actually really, it's really healthy to do that. This is not a it, conversation you have to have on your own. And then once you start doing it, you start getting this refreshing kind of feeling that, hey, I'm not as busy all the time. I'm not as overwhelmed all the time. Yep. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize it. I was in a constant state of panic mode. Yeah. Like, I wasn't giving enough. <laughs> what? Pump the brakes. <laughs> Screw you, I did it all. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, also, one of the things is... Uh, Tony White made a great comment. Yes. Um, and so we're we're bouncing around a little bit at this point. It's like we're not we're one hour and twenty minutes into this, and only one internet crash. Uh, so <laughs> I'm sure having a little fun. You're just making it, you know, up for the internet crash time. <laughs> um, it takes effort to stay current and reach out past old friends to newer members. That can be a barrier. Yeah, it is. Also, I would like to note that if you ever need to discuss this barrier, hunt this person down. They are amazing at it. Um, again and again and again. So I've known this individual for a long time. Um, and again and again and again, they reach out past their own ideas of what the SCA should be to continue learning and being active uh, and being engaged. Um and going from there. And so I hope that you're still listening. Uh, and I hope that many people reach out to you. Um, because yeah, it is hard. That barrier is super hard because you want to be with your friends. You want to be with the people that are your pack and that your family and everything else like that. Because the SCA creates that really well. Mm -hmm. um, but also occasionally it's worth just being like, newcomer over there looks uncomfortable. Maybe I'll go check in on that. Um, and that's something that's really, really cool. And I want to say that you've done this so many times. Now I want to meet Tony. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, you should. Uh, also, <laughs> fucking brilliant at everything they touch. I'm, I'm going to make a note here. <laughs> Hunt down individual. Hunt down Tony White slash Genevieve to pick her brain. Uh, and Rose, I hope that this uh, that answers your question. Uh, or kind of does. Uh, we're also welcome if you ever want to just have like a rant session with me. You can totally ping me on Facebook. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> that's a... Bridget. I All right, you. let's let's do it. Uh, <laughs> okay, Brigitte says you so hard. Recognizing the sustainability of your efforts is a leadership behavior. If your peer council isn't talking about those behaviors and candidates, why not? This is uh, all you, unfortunately. No, because they <laughs> fucking should be. Um, that's actually that's actually one of the things that is really um, is really big is sustainability of your efforts is actually, I think, the reason why. It, it, this, this again, is kind of a toxic cycle, and I can only speak to it in my kingdom. I cannot speak it to it in other kingdoms, uh, and I will not pretend to know all of the SCA. Uh, <laughs> is that I really feel that, like, the West waits until a student gives up before they peer them. Uh, and I think that that's because they're waiting for them to understand their own sustainability level, but we've created a really bad cycle around it. Um, where we're like, well, you know, eventually they're going to burn out, and then if they come back, they will understand their own barriers better. Like... Or we can have that conversation way sooner. Um, and it can be part of like that training. Like I talk to all my students about like, are you burned out? Like, what is your burnout level? No, you're not taking on this job because you're burned out and I can see it, but you can't see it yet. So I'm going to step in as like the weird little mama bird and be like, <laughs> nope, motherfucker. And then cool. Like in the next rain, this may come up again. And so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing on that is, 
Um, we should be discussing that as peers, especially, but we shouldn't be discussing it as like, can the candidate do this? We should be discussing it as, let me teach my students how to do this. Like, let me, let me take the time to teach those that are around me. Okay. This is how you do this. So you'll be here for years versus, you know, ramping up and then just being like, fuck this shit. I'm out. That, that, that live fast, die hard. Yeah. You know, that, that's great. The fast and furious, but maybe you want to make them prepared to do that lifelong marathon. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I'm in it for the, the long haul. Oh, so one of the things that I did want to talk about that I totally realized is that we're going to take a giant bat turn on. Uh, and for anybody that doesn't get this, this is from the original Batman uh, show is that like they shoot out the hook and they'd grab a telephone pole and they would you turn the vehicle really hard. I love it was a that. family saying that I still use bat turn, which means the conversation is going to 180 flip. We have talked about retaining old members. We have not talked about retaining our youth. No, let's talk about it. So, also, I'm totally reading Bridget's comment real quick. Oh, yeah, peerage is not about martyrdom. I fucking hate that idea. Like, no, no, stand on that soapbox. I want you to go off. We should do a show about that. Um, uh, okay, need to get... <laughs> hint, hint, Cal. Stello and Cal and... Oh, dude. If you can get Bridget on your show, she's a fucking delight. I loved having her on Between Two Peers. It was so good. She is, oh, chef kiss. All right. So uh, we'll set up a potential future show with uh, both yourself and uh, Bridget. And, and Oh, and man, I will be on any show that Bridget's on that she wants me on. Like, I just adore her. Um, <laughs> so, but retaining our youth. Um, and so I think we actually have a little bit of like, we have part of the right conversation. We have very young activities and we have some like preteen activities and we have like no teen activities. Um, and then we have adult activities. Um, I'm going to talk about a different aspect, how we emotionally degrade our youth. And I'm going to speak from personal opinion and I'm going to speak to how I got a squire. Um, and so... Because I was started in the SCA at 15, um, there are still people to this day that will be like, oh, well, you know, in your youth, I'll be like 20 years ago, 20 years ago, literally I have a house payment, like gone through college, have a real job, like real. I'm an adult now. <laughs> I'm an I'm an adult. I pay taxes. Um, as soon as you pay taxes, nobody should call you boy or girl. Okay. Child. Um, child um and so one of the things that ends up happening with our youth is we forget to see that they age and we forget to see that they are adults once you hit about 20 years old you're actually kind of the same age forever like whatever we see each other on the weekends like i don't know that half of my friends are in their 50s i don't give a fuck <laughs> but one of the things that ends up happening is that we forget to recognize our youth grow up and our youth grow up really, really fast because most of the people, most of the adults they interact with interact with them three to four times a year. And so they go from 12 to 16 really fast. Blink of and an you eye. know what also happens between 12 and 16? They go from a child's brain to a teenage brain. And from 16 to 20, they go from a teenage brain to an adult brain. And how they interact with their peers. It is a really, really steep curve. Yes. We need to, as a society, recognize that. And treat them as Definitely. such. Treat them as adults much sooner than we do. Start talking to them as adults much sooner. Because our retention is not about having games for them to stay no. fucking valid or like something to do. Guess what? You're 16. You can go fight. You're still serving. You're doing everything else on courts and everything else like that. Stop treating them as children. Stop speaking to them as they are children. They're young adults and should be treated as such, which involve both responsibilities and consequences in there. And within the society, like this is a huge thing. And this is a, I will die on the soapbox. I had somebody call my squire boy when he was 20 fucking years old. Guess what? I was almost in a fist fight in the middle of a war over that. Cause I was like, if you call him boy one more time, disrespect him and his age 
one more time and I will get my ass R and deed really quickly over this because I don't give a fuck. Like that's a huge thing. Like giving well, them the respect of their age is huge because they're and not if you leave. don't give it to them. They can't blossom and grow into who they're going to be. It's yeah. like trying to grow a plant and denying it sunlight and water. Yeah, they're not bonsai trees. God damn it. <laughs> I'm just, you know, the analogy, like no, the analogy is you, there. I'm just saying that they're I'm agreeing with your analogy. I'm saying they're not bonsai trees. They're not gonna stay 12 years old forever. No. Like, stop. You that. can prune them all you want, but if you keep pruning it, it's never going to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Also, they are valid for awards. Stop not giving that 12 year old that's pulling their weight an AOA. Because you're yeah. not old enough to get that award. Fuck you. Like, legit. If that comes out of your mouth. Fuck you. The AOA is the most powerful award that we give. End of story. That says you are valid. That says you are a part of the society for the rest of your life. Welcome to, like, we're going to encourage you to go get your arms and name registered. Anybody, any age, is that valid? Stop taking it away from them. No. I have been way too serious on this show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next time you come back with uh, Bridget, uh, we're going to drink instead. <laughs> Also, stop holding them to their parents' standards. Jennifer has that right. Yeah. Like, it, it, so no matter how much they look like their parents, they may be a carbon copy clone of their parents. They are not their parents. They may have similar personality traits, but they're not that parent. No. You cannot hold them as if they're that individual. They're mm -hmm. their own individual. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's just, oh, let our youth be youth, but also then treat them as adults as they age. Like, mm -hmm. let them be the age they are, not the age you think they are. Ugh. Definitely. Sorry, there's there's my like. No, 100% valid. <laughs> so is there anything else before I like release you for your evening since I have just soapboxed the shit out of well, your Well, do you have times? a sh shout out that you would like to give to anybody in the known world a shout out to anybody in the know i am you didn't warn me about this i could have like i know you could have thought about this for days and days and months and fuck well okay cool i'm gonna give a shout out to uh both the society dei officer and the society <gasps> social media officer um and i'm totally going to use their mundane names of uh jess and bridget uh so our society runs off the backs of our officers and we tend to shit on our officers a lot uh and we tend to shit on our officers that are strangled for other reasons um <clears throat> laws and uh people that oversee their jobs and other things uh, that I probably shouldn't mention on the show so people don't get mad. Um, either way, I'm gonna say that those two individuals through the pandemic uh, and through both ever-changing offices and ever-changing rules have just rocked it. They are two amazing individuals. If you ever can have conversations with them, have conversations with them. They are just delights and they'll drop more F-bombs than I do. Um, okay. But also they're really, they have done so much for the society that they will never be thanked for because people don't know how many hours go in behind the scenes for what they do. And so my shout out is to two people that have literally given this society more in the last two years over a pandemic than most people ever think they will give to this society. And so I just want to say thank you both very, very much. And thank you for everything you do and you continue to do. Thank you. That, that's great. Um, while you had internet failure, I did my shout out. I'll do it one more time. Lady Catherine, who came to her very first event and showed in Queen's Prize and had progress pictures. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming up and introducing yourself to everybody. Thank you for the conversations. You are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Come talk to me. We'll hang out as soon as we can. <laughs> um, so coming up, on Calbard's Corner, we have uh, next weekend. Let me think here. Nope. Yeah. The 16th of January on Coffee with Cal, we have Cal interviewing King James the Holy to talk about transparency and openness. It'll be an amazing show. Tune in and check it out. 
And then coming up in two weeks, I will have the amazing Nye on my show on 123, where we will talk more about this road to attention. <laughs> and she's got a lot to say. So that's going to be great. I'm looking forward to that show. Um, I'm giggling because I was just like, a lot to say. Okay, yeah. Uh... <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> I have more to say than I thought I did. So everybody thought, always has more to about? say. Everybody says, oh, I, you know, yeah, I can come on. I just don't know how much I could talk about retention. I'm like, no, retention is such a large, diverse, involved topic. And then when you think you're not passionate about it, something clicks and boom, all the information comes out. Yep. So, yeah. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, if you're catching the replay, thank you for that. You can definitely check out Calbar's Corner uh, at YouTube or on his Patreon. You can get stickers at Redbubble. If you want to check out his TikTok, Cal has a wonderful TikTok as well. He's a funny guy. I'm also on TikTok. I'm going to have a bunch of stuff drop here momentarily now that I'm done getting a bunch of scroll work done. Um, but thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Helga. You're amazing. Thank I you for having you. me on. <laughs>